Okay, we're going to talk about solving problems that involve similar shape and scale drawing. So we're going to talk first this one. An architect built a, definitely should say built, nothing like reading it to realize the mistakes I made, a scale model of a sports stadium using a scale in which two inches represents 30 feet. The height of the sports stadium is 180 feet. What's the height of the scale model in inches? So I'm talking about inches and I'm talking about feet. So I'm gonna label inches, feet. So the scale is two inches is 30 feet. This wants to know what if the stadium is 180 feet? So that's an equal, right? Again, I have feet, inches. So it's 180 feet and I wanna know how many inches will that be? So you could do cross products, you could see if you see relationship from one um, part to the other. This is one that's gonna be a lot easier just to see, hey, what am I doing from one of the ratios to the other? And I can see that from three to 18 is times six. So 30 to 180 is times six. So if I multiply this times six, to have an equivalent ratio, I'm going to multiply this times six. And that's gonna get me 12. So my answer is 12 inches. Okay, the next one. Corbin made a scale model of the San Jacinto Monument. The monument has an actual height of 604 feet. Corbin's model used a scale in which one inch represents 100 feet. What's the height in inches of Corbin's model? So again, I have um, 600 feet of inches, feet. So the scales one inch is 100 feet. So we have inches and feet. One inch is representing 100 feet. And I wanna know what will be the height of the model if it's 604 feet, right? And so I'm looking for X right there. So there's a lot of ways you could do this. So I'm just going to show you, because I showed you the relationship from there to there, I'm gonna show you the cross products way just to be showing you a multiple um, of different ways. So if I did cross products, I would do 100 times X is 100 X equals, don't forget to write that equal sign because that's a big difference. If it's equal, multiply that, that's a big difference. And then one times 604 is 604. So now I have an equation, right? I have 100x equals 604. How do I solve that? Divide both sides by 100, right? Okay. If you're not sure of what's going to happen if I divide it by 100, that's okay. Let's actually divide it, okay? If I do 604 divided by 100, 100 can't go into 6, it can't go into 60, it's going to go into 604, 6 times, right, which is 600, subtract, I get 4, add a decimal and 0, decimal, bring my 0 down, it's going to go into 40, 0 times, add another 0, it's 400, so that'll be 4 times. So notice that it becomes 6.04, so when I was dividing by 100, it just kind of moved the decimal two places. So that's going to be 6.04. So that's 6.04 inches. That's gonna be the height of the model. Okay. The distance between two cities on a map is 3.5 centimeters. The map uses a scale in which one centimeter represents 20 kilometers. What is the actual distance between these two cities in kilometers? So again, let's look at my scale. What am I talking about? Centimeters? Kilometers. So centimeters, kilometers. One centimeter is 20 kilometers, and I want to know what's that going to equal to. And again, this is going to be centimeters, this is going to be kilometers. So one centimeter is 20 kilometers. It says that it's 3.5 centimeters on the map. So I want to know how many kilometers that is in real life. So I could do cross products, yes, but this is one that's gonna be easier if I just look like, okay, well, what am I doing here? I am multiplying from here to here, that's times 
So that means here I'm going to times 3.5, right? So if I did 20 times 3.5, isn't that the same thing as 3.5 times 2? Um, or I mean 35 times 2, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so 3.5 times 20. That's 0. Then 2 times 5 is 10. Carry my 1. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. There's one decimal place, one decimal place. So do I need the point zero? No, it's just 70. So my answer is 70 kilometers. Okay, questions about our shadows. We seem to like these problems. Samantha wants to find the height of a pine tree in her yard. She measures the height of the mailbox at three feet and its shadow at 4.8 feet. Then she measures the shadow of the tree at 56 feet. How tall is the tree? Well, you know, I'm such an artist. I like to uh, show off my artistic skills here. So I know that I have a tree, right? So here's my tree. I know, it's an amaz amazing tree. Okay, and here's the shadow of the tree. The shadow of the tree is 56, right? And I don't know the height of the tree. Then I have a mailbox. There's my little mailbox. I know, you're thinking that's the best mailbox you've ever seen. I know. So I know that the mailbox, the height of the mailbox is three feet and its shadow is 4.8 feet. So I need to figure out how to compare this. I can, y'all, you can do the X over 56 equals three over 4.8. You could do X over three equals 56 over 4.8. Um, as long as these are either corresponding side to side or up and down, and these are either side to side or up and down, okay? So um, I'm going to do it, I think X corresponds with three, so X over three equals 56 over 4.8. And I could do cross products, but y'all, I can also know that um, 3 times what is 48? Well, let's say I didn't know, okay? But this is an easy one where I could probably figure it out pretty easy. So 4.8 divided by 3. 3 goes into 4 once, which is 3. Subtract, I get 1, I have 18. 3 times 6 is 18. So that's gonna be 1.6. So what that means is I am dividing from here to here, this is dividing by 1.6. So from here to here, I can divide by 1.6. Now you might be saying, well, Ms. Schuler, can I do cross products? Yes, you can. I was just, again, showing you the different ways you can do it. And sometimes you have to, sometimes one way is easier than the other. So now I'm gonna do 56 divided by 1.6. So I'm gonna come over here and do 56 divided by 1.6. I have to get the decimal out of the divisor, right? So I'm gonna move this over once, which means I need to move the decimal over here over once, which it's there, we just don't see it, but it's right there. So I'm gonna put it there and put a zero, and then I bring that decimal up right there. So now I'm going to look to see how many times 16, 16 will go into 56. So if I think of my multiples of 16, 16 is like your every other multiple of eight. So like eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, uh, 50, uh, 56, 64, 72, 80. Uh, 88, 96, and from there, I don't know them in my head. So 16 will get into 56, the closest they'll get is 48, which is multiplying it by three. I subtract and I'm going to get eight. Bring down my zero. 16 will go into 85 times, one, two, three, four, five, which is 80, subtract and I get zero. So that's gonna be 35. 
So my answer is 35 feet. That is how tall the tree is. Okay, um, I'm going to kind of skip because I'm just trying, I'm not gonna do every single problem because of time sake. Um, let's do, um, well, I will do this one. A building with a height of 14 meters cast a shadow that's 16 meters long, while a taller building cast a 24 meter long shadow. What is the height of the taller building? Okay, so we have our building. Here's the windows. I know, it's beautiful. Okay, so that building is 14 feet, meet, or 14 meters, I mean, and its shadow is 16 meters. Then I have a taller building. I know, you're just gonna be devastated if I didn't draw windows, right? Or maybe I should have a door to that one. Okay, so this one, we don't know how tall it is. We wanna know the height, we don't know it but we do know its shadow is 24 meters, okay? So let's say that I said 14, I could say 14 over X equals 16 over 24. There's so many, again, so many ways you can do it. Let's say that I do 14 over 16, okay? 14 over 16 equals, what corresponds with 14? X, what corresponds with 16? 24. Sometimes I just like to make things simpler. I think about fractions, and this is a ratio, but it's set up as a fraction. Can I simplify it? Okay, I can simplify it. No, you can't cross simplify. I can't go across because that's only if there's multi if I'm multiplying. That's not a multiplication sign. It's an equal sign. So I can't go from here to here. Okay, but could I simplify from here and here? What can divide into both 14 and 16? Could I divide them both by 2? I sure could. If I divide them both by two, that's gonna become seven and that's gonna become eight. Now, what am I doing to eight to get to 24? Times three. So what should I do to seven to get to x? Times three. And what will I get? 21. So that means it's going to be 21 meters is the height of that building. Okay, I just wanted to show you this. Sometimes you can make it a little bit easier. And the last one I'm going to do is this problem right here. On a map, one centimeter represents seven kilometers. The distance between the park and the school on the map is 3.6 centimeters. Roger rode his bicycle, bicycle from the park to school and back. How far did he travel? Well, I'm talking about one centimeter is seven kilometers. So I have centimeters and I have kilometers. One centimeter is seven kilometers. And again, this is gonna be centimeters, kilometers. So is it gonna be 3.6 centimeters? Well, that's just going one way, but he has to go back. So it's not really 3.6, it's gonna be twice that. So it's three and six tenths times two and that's gonna be 7.2. Now you may say, well, could I just do this and then multiply by two at the end? Yes, you could. So I'm gonna do 7.2 right here and then X right here. So I need to know, what am I doing from here to here? Oh, well, I'm multiplying by 7.2. So what should I do here? Multiply by 7.2. So I have 7.2 times seven. Seven times two is 14, carry my one. Seven times seven is 49, plus one is 50. And then there's one decimal place, so it's gonna be 50.4, right? So there is my answer, 50.4 kilometers. Man, is he riding his bike a long, long way. It's a long way. All right, and I hope this is helpful.